So today we have this framework and uh, in this framework we have three independent variables say transformational leadership, employee engagement and employee satisfaction and uh, we have the, uh, the dependent variable employee performance. So in this way uh, we will be generating three different hypotheses and uh, the hypotheses are uh, the hypothesis number one is transformational leadership has significant relationship with employee performance in Jordanian telecommunication companies. Then our hypothesis two is employee engagement has significant relationship with employee performance in Jordanian telecommunication companies. And the third hypothesis is employee satisfaction has significant relationship with employee performance in Jordanian telecommunication companies. So for testing this hypothesis and uh, uh, the and uh, doing the analysis regarding this framework, we have a, a survey questionnaire through which we have collected the data. And uh, this this survey questionnaire is uh, now in front of you. Uh, we have two parts of this survey questionnaire. Part A and Part B. Part A contains the demographic profile of the respondents and they containing three variables for the demographic uh, profile of the respondents. Number one is the gender and we have two options male and female. For the second demographic uh, question we have age and here we have three different options from 20 to 29, 30 to 45 and uh, more than 45. And uh, we have uh, the third variable as the experience. Uh, in experience, we have uh, given four choices to the respondents. Uh, the first choice is less than one year, the second is one to three years, and uh, the third is three to five years, and the fourth option is more than five years. In part B, we have the statements regarding the constructs in the framework which we have uh, just uh, discussed uh, while I was showing you the framework of the research. So in our research framework we have uh, one dependent variable which is employee performance and for that we have uh, six different items with uh, five point uh, and uh, the respondents have to answer on the scale from one to five which is a Likert scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree and uh, our uh, second variable uh, is a transformational leadership which is the first independent variable of our study and it is having uh, seven items. Uh, in the same way we have the employee engagement as a second independent variable and it has eight items and the employee satisfaction has uh, seven items. Uh, we have collected the data for all that and uh, we have uh, put uh, all the data into the SPSS already for your convenience and uh, like uh, here you can see that we have the data for the gen for gender, for age, for experience uh, and uh, then we have the items. So employee performance we have uh, six items we have input the data we have already input the data of employee performance here then transformational leadership we have seven items then employee engagement we have eight items and in the same way uh, employee satisfaction we have seven items. So we have put the data for that uh, for all the respondents and uh, total we have 194 respondents. So uh, we have recorded all the responses in our SPSS file. Uh, now uh, we are going to perform the analysis on that and uh, then we are going to interpret uh, the data. So. So uh, now we have this data file and uh, in this data file we are going to perform uh, certain analysis and then we are going to put those analysis into the file which will be comprises, comprising of our chapter number 4 of the research project. So uh, the analysis which we are going to do, are, uh, they are the basic level analysis uh, and uh, like uh, if a student who is doing a basic uh, level research of uh, like a, a sort of project in the uh, uh, like undergraduate level so they can uh, cope up with their problems what they face especially uh, regarding the data analysis. So let's see how to do the data analysis for uh, for the for a small project 
uh, of the undergraduate first what we do first uh, we try to check the missing values of the data that either there is any missing value in our data or not for that what we have to do we have to go to analyze and then we go to the descriptive statistics and we go to the frequencies uh, so for the frequencies we have to select all variables by pressing control a and uh, when you uh, click this button all the variables will go into the next uh, window and uh, here we do not have to choose anything uh, even we have to uncheck the disable frequency tables because right now we are not interested to see the frequency of the variables just we are interested to see that either there are any missing values uh, present in our data or not so uh, let's go and check it press ok and uh, we can see a table here uh, it is a lengthy long table so for analyzing this what we can do uh, we can copy it and uh, we can paste it into the into excel so it will be much better for us to analyze or visualize the things uh, because uh, you know that uh, we are just getting this uh, variable in the uh, horizontal form so uh, what we can do that uh, we can open a new file in excel and just uh, I, I had just copied the table from the uh, output of SPSS and now I am going to press here control V and I have pasted the same table over here and I am going to select the whole table control C and in the next sheet in the new sheet uh, I will transpose it and uh, now see the rows have been uh, changed into the column now here I can easily uh, see if there is any value other than zero and I can see that there are all all the missing values in uh, for the all variables we can see that it is showing zero it means that there is no missing value in our data set so for the missing value we do not have to now worry about that and uh, uh, we have to go ahead uh, for the further analysis so for that first we are going to check the normality of the data and then we are going to check the outliers in the data either we have any outliers or not so uh, let's examine the, the normality of the data for that we will go to analyze again and then we will go to descriptive statistics and uh, descriptives uh, and what we are going to do that uh, we will select all the items only because no need to do the normality test for the categorical variable so we have to see that either our uh, variables are normal or not the sub items so for that uh, we are interested to check the distribution of the data and here we have two options kurtosis and skimness so uh, the ideal values for the kurtosis and skimness are plus minus 3 either it should be uh, above uh, minus 3 and or it should be less than positive 3 so uh, I have checked for the kurtosis and uh, skimness and they continue and I'm going to press OK and here I can see a table showing me the skimness, the results for the skimness of the data and uh, kurtosis. Okay, so if we look at the values in the statistic column under skimness, uh, we can see all the values, and these values uh, uh, are all under plus minus one, so there is uh, no issue of the excess skimness and uh, for the kurtosis if we examine the kurtosis again the kurtosis the highest value for the kurtosis is one negative 1.32 so it means that these uh, both statistics are within the acceptable range and uh, we can say this thing that our data is normally distributed uh, if the uh, if the values of skimness and kurtosis are having the issue and they are uh, above plus minus 3 then we have to uh, manage for that and uh, uh, we have to try to remove uh, the issues of normality uh, but here in this data there is no issue of the abnormality so we can go ahead and uh, we can go for the further analysis uh, for that uh, the further analysis we will do the outlier that is there any outlier present in our data or not uh, outliers are actually the extreme values so if there is any extreme value in our data it will definitely impact on the mean of the data and the analysis will be biased so for that uh, what we do we will go to analyze descriptives and again we will go to descriptives 
uh, for analyzing the outliers of the data, what we have to do, uh, we have to understand that uh, either the z values, the z score of the variable is uh, outside the range of plus minus 5. If it exists, which means that any value outside the range of plus minus 5 exists, then we have the problem of outlier. Otherwise, we do not have the problem of outlier. What we have done, we have put all the items in the variable box and here we have to check on save standardized values as variables. So what will happen that when we press OK, the SPSS will generate few new columns and it will generate the Z scores for all the given items. So let's see how it happens. I have put it and uh, you can see the data view. In the data view, if you go to the end, you can see the name of the items starting from Z. This means that these values are basically the Z scores of the items which we have included in our data set. So now for all the items we have the Z scores. What we are going to do, we are going to, uh, uh, we are going to uh, find out the minimum and maximum values for all these Z scores and we have to see that either the values are between the uh, acceptable value of plus minus 5 or not. For that what we have to do, we have to go again into the descriptives, right? And here what we have to do now, we have to remove the check from the save standardized values because now we do not want the standardized values, we already have the standardized value. In the option we will uh, check for the minimum and maximum values and we will uncheck for the kurtosis and skewness and we will continue and ok and uh, we can see the minimum and maximum values uh, for the oh sorry I have uh, mistakenly selected the normal items but I do not have to select the normal items I have to select the Z scores so I will select the Z scores and for Z score I will run the minimum uh, yeah here you go and you can see the minimum values uh, in the highest minimum value we are having 2.13 so definitely it is under uh, minus 5 okay and uh, for the from the positive side the maximum values we have the highest value uh, 1.8 yes 1.8 something 1.80 so it means that all the values are within the acceptable range of plus minus 5 and we do not have any problem of outlier. If we have any problem of outlier then we will have to look for the particular outlier and we have to remove the particular case from our analysis but in this case in this data we do not have the issue of the outlier and uh, now we can go for the further analysis. So uh, now uh, for that.